Noisy Pixel. What's up, nerds, and welcome to another episode of Noisy Newsweek for the week of June 19th, 2021. Here's where I fill you in on some notable news posted to NoisyPixel.net this past week. Before I get into the news, I'd just like to say sorry that I didn't release an episode last week. Glasses are a little squeaky. E3 was a huge undertaking for us and I just couldn't find time to record and create the layout of the video and I'm gonna blame a little bit on Mark even though he told me to do it still and he was sad that I canceled and I'm gonna make up for it with it. A long episode that I'm gonna try and uh, rapid fire for you. No, we're not gonna go through all of the announcements. Also, I'm standing up because I don't really feel like sitting down right now. I feel like uh, expanding and I got a new mic and we're gonna test it out. So if it sucks, I'm sorry. We'll change it next week. We'll get better. We're always improving. We're always improving. So with that said, let's just get into the news. I don't wanna waste any more time. You can let me know what you're playing below. I'll talk. I'm always here. I'm always seeing everything you guys are saying. Oh, and one more thing. If anybody didn't know, all of the articles that I talk about in this video are in the about section. So if you wanna know more about each article, just click on the link, just follow the link. They're all there. Onto the news. So the best news out of E3 2021, you guys. Koei Tecmo bringing Fatal Frame Made in Other Blackwater to PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, Nintendo Switch, and PC in 2021. That's right, it's coming, it's back, Wii U exclusive, no more. This also means that Nintendo is not giving them enough money to make sure that this stays exclusive to them. So good on you, Koei Tecmo, for sticking to your guns and just putting some money in something for once. Guy, you're so lazy all the time, you just make everyone else pay you. It's funny because all the best Koei Tecmo developed games are published from other publishers like uh, Neo and Hyrule Warriors. Actually, any Warriors that is given like Gundam from Bandai, they really do need to support their IPs a little better monetarily. NIS America announced that they will be part of a live stream from Falcom for their 40th anniversary. The live stream will air on June 24th at 10 p.m. PT on New Game Plus's channel. So we'll be covering it. If you fall asleep, don't worry. We got you covered. You can see all the news at noisypixel.net, but they are promising new announcements along with some soundtrack stuff. They're gonna play some music, but who cares about that? All you guys want is that Cold Steel shit and you guys wanna ship all your characters? I don't know about you nerds, sometimes. 505 Games and Rabbit and Bear Studios release new gameplay for Euden Chronicles 100 Heroes, now coming in 2023. They also announced a new game, Euden Chronicle Rising, coming in 2022. Both games will be released on all platforms and Rising will be set before the events and you can just cover story chapters leading up to the main game. I guess this is not going to take away development time from 100 Heroes. So it is a 2.5D platformer with action elements and more narrative beats. So we we'll get some more of that. Why not? Square Enix revealed a new game with Koi Tecmo's Team Ninja called Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin. This is a action game, kind of in the vein of Neo, in development for PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Series X, and PC for 2022 release. There is a demo available now on PS5, and we have a preview on the site. This game is like a isekai with some weirdo named Jack who looks like a Forever 21 model, and uh, I don't know. It plays better than it looks from what I hear, so try out the demo and let me know what you think. Continuing with the Koei Tecmo announcements, Juren announced that they will host Dead or Alive Extreme Venus Vacation on Juren. So this is not gonna be available on Steam. This is a browser version of the volleyball game Dead or Alive that's been available on Steam for a while, but not in your region, most likely, because it's only been available in Japan. Some people get around that with VPN and shit, but I ain't got time for that. I just wanna go to the game and I wanna download it. I don't wanna do no back doors. If there's one thing, Zaro doesn't like, it's going in through the back door. Atlas announced that Shimigami Tensei 5 
is going to release on November 12th, 2021. This was already leaked a little bit, but they released new gameplay. The game looks cool. I don't know if the main protagonist is a boy or a girl, but got me feeling some kind of way. So says a lot about me, I suppose. Watch the trailer and let me know what you think about the game. There's also gameplay shown and you can fight and capture demons, all the normal SMT stuff. This is not Persona, so it's a lot lonelier, as they say. During the Nintendo Direct showcase, Nintendo revealed Advanced Wars 1 plus 2 Reboot Camp is in development for a December 3rd, 2021 release on Switch. This is the first and second Advanced Wars that were released on Game Boy Advance. And I think, there were, I think the first one was a launch title because I had it when I first got my purple Game Boy. So I'm not sure though. Time was weird back then for me. I just got stuff and I didn't really pay attention to when it was released. Yeah, it's been remastered. It has audio fixes. It has um, animation. Looks great. I love Advance Wars. I'm glad that Nintendo is doing more with the IP. CyberConnect2 announced that Fuga Melodies of Steel will launch on July 29th, 2021 on PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Series X, Switch, and PC. And that's awesome. This is a little furry Tales Concerto title that has some RPG and some exploration elements. Man, these characters look so freaking cute. So if you have not seen this game in action, we have a preview on the site, but they also released a trailer. So let me know what you think about Fuga because it's one of the games that I've been looking forward to for quite some time. WSS Playground announced their title, III Revolving Wonderland, is currently in development for PC. This game is an action RPG kind of game where you explore and then you get in these battles, but you have to use like rhythm and it looks really cool. Looks very indie, very Japanese. So check out the trailer to know more. Limited Run Games announced that they will publish the United Pictures developed Plumbers Don't Wear Ties on PS4, PS5, Switch, and PC physically and digitally. Uh, this game sucks. So I'm sorry for whoever is going to buy this and play it. I know a lot of those Limited Run nerds, they just buy the game and keep it in the plastic. And I speak for myself that I do that as well. But yeah, whatever, you know, <sighs> cool, I guess. This game just sucks. Take your damn clothes off. Anyway, that's my quote from the game. If you haven't played the game, then you probably don't know why they said that. Anyway, moving on. Fly High Works announced that they will publish the Skip More developed 2D adventure, Transurbery, Trans, Trans, Transy Ruby, Transy Ruby on PC in fall 2021. This is a cave story type game and it looks a lot like cave story, but it's not. So I don't know what to tell you. It probably has some different unique stuff and it looks cool, so I'll play. Dangan Entertainment announced that they will publish the next stage and visual dart developed action adventure Ultra Age in 2021. This looks like a kind of a normier title than Dangan is usually publishing, but it's from a small Japanese indie team and man, it is action. I loved watching this trailer. I'm very curious about how it performs because usually we just see these vertical slices and that's it. So I want to see more, but it definitely has my attention because it does look really good. Developer Boki Neko announced that they will publish their action adventure, The Soldat with the twin arms and it'll have english text the game is coming to pc in 2021 and it's been developed in unreal engine 4. this game looks rad but twin arms i feel like i have twin arms right now so maybe work on the title a little bit game looks rad though I'm glad it's getting an english release and i'm glad i don't have to wait for it to be like oh should i import should i not import but it's coming inti creates released a new trailer for azure striker gun vault 3 god damn you get some Kieran gameplay, you get some Gunvolt gameplay. Shit looks dope. Ooh, I love it. I love this game. I just want to watch it all day. I can't wait to play it. So it is coming to Nintendo Switch in 2022 and can't be more excited. NAS America announced that they will publish the Furyu developed RPG Monarch in the West for PS4, PS5, Switch, and PC in early 2022. Yes, got that right. The game is like your average Japanese AA game. It looks a lot like that Caligula 2 has the same engine probably. 
but looks okay. I don't need them to raise the bar for these niche Japanese RPGs. I just need the story to be good. That's all I care about. I don't care about the looks of it. They can all look like they belonged on PS3. I don't care. I just want to play a good game. That's all I'm looking for. Bandai Namco has finally released gameplay from the From Software developed action adventure Elden Ring and god damn does it look good. The game is coming to PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Series X, and PC on January 21st, 2022. I can bet you $10 that Elden Ring will probably be delayed, but we'll wait. We'll hold out. I have hope. I'm still waiting for Digimon Survive, so that's all I really care about from this publisher. If you've watched the trailer, let me know what you think in the comments below, because it does look really good. Dagon Entertainment announced that they will publish the Moonlight Games developed action adventure Hunt of the Night on PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC at an unannounced date. This game looks really good. It is very much like a Metroidvania action game, so expect that, but clearly I can't get enough of them because I'm still playing them all the damn time. So, they're making them for me, less for you. Moving on, Modus Games announced that they will publish the Replay Game Studios developed Solstice on PC at an unannounced date. I just wanted to highlight it real quick because it does look really cool and I don't think it was like given like the biggest reveal and people probably forgot about it over E3 so I just wanted to bring it back to your attention. You get this little ghost girl and you get this girl with a big ass sword. <sighs> Sign me up, I'm already there, pre-ordered, wishlist. Take my money. Still book. I'll get a still book. Playism released a new trailer for the FYQD studio developed first person action game Bright Memory Infinite coming to Xbox Series X and PC in 2021 and it looks really good. It looks so much better than that Bright Memory crap that's on Xbox Series X right now and PC. Oh, game makes me sick. But this one cures me of that illness and makes me just want to pick up the controller and dive into this action because man all they really need to fix is a lot but mostly the story just make it a little cohesive and then refine the the hud and just i don't know there's a lot of work that needed to be done in that game and i hope that they took that because the game looks beautiful okay so they got they nailed that it needs more. On to visual novel news. Danganronpa is coming to Switch as the Danganronpa Decadence Collection. I don't know if the collection is in the name, but anyway, it comes with all three Danganronpas and a little expanded title from Danganronpa V3. Yeah, I mean, it's coming later this year, so that's really rad. Can't get enough of this game, so Spike Chunsoft is publishing it, but we have a lot of visual novel news, so I can't stay on Danganronpa, so let's just Let's just keep it moving. Jazz Blue announced that they have stopped localization on the Otome visual novel Lamento Beyond the Void. This is to do with budgets and money and their other titles didn't sell. Very sad to hear this. I do hope that Jazz Blue continues to localize games even though this one was out of their scope. I hate to hear it. I hate to hear it. It's just, uh, it doesn't sit well with me, but good luck to the team. Doki Doki Literature Club Plus is coming to Switch, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, and PC on June 30th, later this month. Uh, I don't really like this game. It just, I've said it before, but there are plenty of games that bigger media outlets can cover uh, in the visual novel bubble, as it were. But they decided to cover this one because it was somewhat popular and similar to Undertale. Uh, yeah, I step back. This game doesn't need me. This game doesn't need Azario to highlight it, to get a reviewer on it. Because there's going to be a line out the door for it, you know? Give me someone, give me someone, I need someone who wants to review Idol Manager. Which is the next title that I'm going to highlight coming from Playism on July 27th. This is a game where you manage an idol. Doesn't that sound fun? A lot funner than hanging out with some four girls in a literature club. Is it four? Maybe it's four. Maybe it's five. A little nice harem as it were. But yes, Idol Manager is coming west to PC on July 27th. Developer Why So Serious announced that their newest project Eden Schemata is in development for PC and Steam. 
This game, whoa, it's like an animated beauty dream. Oh my God, it looks so good. And there's like visual novel stuff. Ah, oh, I love it. Watch the trailer. Alice in Dissonance released a new trailer for Fault Milestone 2 Side Below. Coming to Nintendo Switch, PS4, and PC this fall. We've been hearing that for years. So what's, what's, what's waiting a couple more months for this game? It's finally coming, guys. CFK announced that the Tell Shop developed visual novel Miracle Snapshot is coming to Nintendo Switch. Uh, this is a game where you manage a little shop, but you're mostly there for the girls. I don't think it has H scenes in it. It's not going to on the Switch version, but it is available on PC. But again, I don't think that there's H scenes in the PC version. Correct me if I'm wrong. Jazz USA announced that they will publish the Chaos L developed visual novel Meteor Pandalum Heart. It's available now on Jazz Store. Came out like last week. We'll have a review on the site soon. The publisher also announced that they will handle the Alcott developed visual novel Onigoko. 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 <laughs> I said it right. It's coming to PC later, like, I think next month, maybe? This month? I don't know if it had a release date, but it's coming. I'll let you know. Access Games released the opening trailer for Olympia Sorty coming to Nintendo Switch this fall. This is an Otome, and it's really cute. So if you like Otome, go check it out. Moonshine Localization is a new publisher that is focusing on Otome, Boy Love, and other Japanese games aimed towards women, and they announced that they will publish the Tokyo On My OG. On My OG. Tokyo On My OG. It's coming Q4 in 2021. This is an official release, and there is, a, I think this is an 18 plus game. It was released in 2014 in Japan, and it has uh, beautiful boys. Need I say more? Sakai Project announced that they will publish the Whirlpool developed romance visual novel Slobbish Dragon Princess Love Plus on PC via Steam on June 22nd. This is just an extended uh, story with uh, all three characters and you get another love scene with them. I think it's only one, one scene, maybe two, but I'm gonna say one. Yeah, if you want some extra time with these characters, why not? Why not dip your toes in a little more uh, slobbish dragon love? Pencil announced that the Primula developed Atome visual novel Taisho X Alice Epilogue will launch on PC via Steam on June 24th, 2021. This is an epilogue and I think it just focuses on uh, Alice and Adesu. Very lovely. Sakai Games announced that they will publish the Studio Ellen developed Heart of the Woods on Nintendo Switch on July 8th. The game is also going to come to PS4, Xbox One, PS5, Series X in August. This is a Yuri visual novel about a heart in the woods. I didn't play the game, clearly, but we have a review on the site that I didn't do. Shirvune has stealth launched the dungeon RPG Suzukuri Dungeon Karen in the Mountain. Suzukuri Dungeon Karen in the Mountain. Karin. Karin in the Mountain on PC via Jiren in the West. And this is a dungeon game where you you find yourself down on your luck, but then you make a pact with this demon girl and you run her dungeon and you get a stop and set traps for other adventurers. Sounds cool to me. Finally, guys, on to previews. We got Final Fantasy VII The First Soldier, Wolfstride, Tendum A Tell of Shadows, Samurai Warriors V, Stranger of Paradise, Final Fantasy Origin, Oli Oli World, Lost Epic. Now, on to reviews. Let me scroll down. Uh... Earth Defense Force, World Brothers, Opie Academy, Big Bouncy Booby Babes, Neptunia Reverse, Guilty Gear Strive, Backbone, Void Terrarium Plus Plus, Ninja Gaiden, Master Collection, Edge of Eternity, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Intermission, Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, Chivalry 2, Chikori, A Colorful Tale, Song of Horror on Consoles, Ender Lilies, Quietus of the Nights, and Mashihima Sama on Switch. The stealth released during E3. We got a review on the site. And that's it. That's the news. F***ing long ass episode. Good job for making it this far. I love you all. I'll see you next week. It'll be a shorter episode. Hopefully Mark can cut this one down because right now I'm looking at the timestamp and it reads almost 30 minutes. So, whew. That was a long one, guys. Thank you so much. Have a great week. I'll see you soon. Let me know if my standing is distracting.
because I can get back to the chair, trust me. But I think I think I enjoyed standing for this long episode. Bye. <laughs>